Hola, buenos días. Estoy muy emocionado de estar aquí. Esta es mi primera vez en Colombia, so gracias por invitarme. Uh, so I uh, just want to set this up a little bit. The, the kind of watch, watch the watchers thing is uh, not to, you know, scare you at, at, at all, really. It's just to kind of simplify some of the security aspects that we're going to talk about. And I think that's important because uh, security is so complex. And what I really enjoy doing is breaking it down to really simple concepts that people can grasp and getting through all the, the vendors and the tooling and everything to, to break it down to focus on what you actually need to, need to know. So this is called the hidden risks of container scanning tools. Uh, just by show of hands, how many people are using vulnerability scanning tools, whether container or otherwise? Oh, nice. Most of the room, so that's, that's great. Uh, this is going to be very topical. I want to start off with a story. This story is uh, attributed to Dr. Irving Zola and usually is used in kind of the healthcare or social services context. But the story is, in a small village, everyone notices these helpless animals floating down the river. They start pulling out animals, saving them one by one. Uh, and then they realize that more and more animals keep coming. And they're like, what the heck's going on? So the villagers organize rescue efforts, dedicating more resources to, to pulling the animals out. They're saving all these animals, right? And amidst all this chaos, one of the villagers starts walking upstream. The others ask, where are you going? <laughs> and he says, I'm going to upstream to see who's throwing animals in the river. And so I like to make this analogy to security because a lot of times we're adding more tooling, adding more complexity, adding more, more, more. This doesn't necessarily bode well for uh, us as administrators and operations people such as myself who are trying to get a grasp on what security aspects do we actually need to focus on. Uh, so keep this upstream story in mind as we go through these slides and just uh, we're going to keep going back upstream to try to get to the root of the, co uh, the cause of this problems. So speaking of confusion and complexity, <laughs> there's no shortage of vulnerability scanning tools. As you see here, Black Duck, Sneak, JFrog, White Source, et cetera. These, is just a, these are just a fraction of the available vulnerability scanners that are out there. And uh, to me, they don't really have any unique offerings. They do a lot of the same things. They may you know, um, add, a, add a few new features here and there. But at the end of the day, uh, you know, we uh, do the scans, we get the scan reports, and then we, you know, try to take action on those. And, and so a lot of these tools are, are coming out and, and with the increased complexity are, you know, touting that they're, you know, the, new, the newest and best thing and, and they provide feature XYZ, uh, which makes it harder for us to evaluate these tools uh, increasing the, the complexity and, and confusing the, the CISOs and uh, those in charge. And meanwhile, we're kind of uh, exposed to uh, any, any you know, security risk that, that comes along when we're kind of evaluating these tools as we uh, you know, get to, to know them and get to have the training around using them. And so it's, it's really a problem being that we don't need all these tools, right? <laughs> How can we boil it down to the, the bare essentials? And so container vulnerability is no exception. Perhaps it's even adding more complexity to it. And you know, due to the widespread adoption of uh, Docker and Kubernetes, it drives the demand for this, and the market knows this, right? So they're you know, saying, you know, adopt these additional tools which provide these different you know, these additional capabilities that are going to uh, provide these unique kind of specialty use cases, as they call them. And um, also, this increases the regulatory requirements. And, and so this adds to the security controls that we're trying to chase and the things that we're trying to measure in terms of getting ourselves in a good security posture. Uh, of course, these tools are, you know, adding on the, the features that 
you know, us, us DevOps uh, engineers need, integrating security into the DevOps pipeline along all stages of the pipeline. So we're shifting left, right? That's a, a common buzzword where we're, you know, uh, building security into our DevSecOps kind of uh, methodologies and, and uh, practices. And so how these tools differentiate themselves is, is commonly uh, like real-time scanning, integration capabilities, ease of use, uh, support, a, for, support for a specific container platform, uh, or any advanced analytics. So it's really uh, adding more to this complexity issue that we have. And on top of that, uh, these container vulnerability tools that we're using, uh, they're just software. Just like any other software, they can have vulnerabilities themselves. Uh, they're, they're just as subject to, you know, a risk, a security risk than anything else. These sometimes produce false positives or false negatives. Uh, false positives, again, detecting a vulnerability when, it, when in fact it's not a vulnerability. Uh, for example, uh, backporting SSH, um, you know, the vulnerability is going to pick that up every time. You know, how can we let our vulnerability scanners know that, uh, you know, to, to scan our code and to make sure that we have the appropriate context, uh, a lot of time that, that is missed, unfortunately. Uh, so we have false negatives, which are not even being able to detect the vulnerability in the, in the first place. So uh, a lot of these scanner, scanner tools require elevated privileges. So uh, this leaves us open to potential uh, attackers taking advantage of RBAC miscongf misconfigurations, uh, unencrypted secrets, uh, running containers as, as root, et cetera. Uh, so this is a, a whole host of other issues and, and uh, would highly recommend you running your containers uh, as not as root, as a, as a best practice. Um, as we'll get to in, in further slides, we'll, we'll notice that there's, there's kind of a, uh, we're talking about vulnerability scanners here, but there's very much a, uh, you know, a, a defense in depth as we'll get to, and there's a lot of different layers to this in terms of initiating that uh, kind of best security posture. And then we have dependency issues. So vulnerable, vulnerability scanners have uh, unpatched vulnerabilities as they rely sometimes on third-party libraries or services. Uh, specific use case is the Claire scanner. In 2019, there was a security vulnerability. Um, it was discovered in Claire's third-party dependency and in the Go uh, HTTP package. So that's a specific example, but um, sometimes you know we have additional uh, databases that we're drawing from, not, not just the national vulnerability database. So we've gone, we've gone, we've gone over a lot already. Um, you know, you're probably very confused and, and uh, probably thinking that I'm trying to <laughs> convince you to not use the container scanner at all, which is not, definitely not the, not the case. But I do think that we need to boil it down to what are the specific um, areas that we need to focus on to simplify things and to, you know, uh, you know, get above the noise a little bit and, and try to determine what, what, what are we actually trying, what are we after here? How can we go upstream to, you know, try to figure out how to best attack this? So we, without getting uh, too much into vendor-specific stuff, I'd like to focus on more of the, the features and the things that we should uh, be highlighting here. So... Uh, I was actually talking with uh, my fellow speakers last night. We were talking about the um, just just the the tooling and how you know uh, you know in in a lot of interviews I give a lot of interviews and in those interviews I'm looking not necessarily for the person who can name all the tools and you know be you know an expert in one tool tool or the other. It's more you know how can how can we boil it down to look at the uh, you know, the, the categories that we're going to be talking about uh, in, this, in these slides to, you know, how can we address the problems that we face and what, how can we boil it down to the actual issues at hand and how can we, you know, use maybe three or four different tools for a specific use case, maybe know the differences, but it's, it's much more... Uh, it's much more than just knowing the the tool itself or the or the brand name or you know AWS or Azure or just one uh, particular 
looking at looking at it through a, a, a really specific lens like that. So, um, you know, we have to use scanners. Like I said, we, we can't not use container scanners. That would be bad. And um, I would advise you to use, you know, um, container scanners in a lot of different contexts. And, and we'll get we'll get to that in a second. But uh, boiling it down to what what we should be uh, focused on here: integration. So integration meaning that we're ensuring that we can integrate this container scanning tool effectively with our CI/CD pipelines. So my my favorite is is GitLab, but or my you know uh, one that I use a lot is GitLab. So I'm going to make sure that my container scanning tool has the capability to operate inside of my pipeline, so it's easily uh, easy to integrate. So tools like Trivi, Claire, Anchor are popular choices amongst many um, for integration integration with CI/CD. Another one is uh, deep dependency scanning. So tools like Sneak or Aqua Security uh, come into play here. And they're known for not only scanning the container image and its vulnerabilities, but also the software, so the libraries and packages underneath. It's very important to, to have both of those aspects as um, we you know, try to identify what's, you know, what's, what's in, our, in our image, container image that we're using, and what, what kind of dependencies those have as well. Also, being able to do a, a granular detection and not only scan uh, before we deploy to our production environments, but also uh, in real time. So we're scanning those container environments, those container runtime environments, and uh, we, we, th we think about Sysdig Secure or TwistLock in those situations, which do a good job with you know, everything from pre-deployment to deployment um, at every stage in your environment, you know, uh, dev, staging, and prod. Uh, for example, and being able to to detect in real time what those vulnerabilities are or may be. Um, so it's good information. So one other thing I wanted to say about that, um, kind of the things that I didn't highlight here, which I, which I didn't think were as important, were just support for multi-cloud or on-premise environments. So choose a scanner that, um, you know, doesn't, is, is not only... Uh, operational in AWS, for example. Um, I, I work for Sivo, and that's kind of what we specialize in. Sivo uh, Cloud is kind of the cloud native uh, cloud, if you will. We don't lock you into a particular service or um, or you know feature. Uh, we we actually encourage you to you know utilize all cloud native tools available to you, so that you can easily migrate on or off. Um, we we don't you know try to sway you either way. And then compliance support. Obviously, this is a this is a big one, but um, HIPAA and, and uh, PCI uh, compliance. If your uh, organization is under those types of scrutiny for for compliance reasons, then obviously that's an important thing to highlight here in looking for a container scanning tool. Uh, another thing that we should be focused on is updating the database. Uh, so a lot of tools like Trivi support frequent automatic updates. And so you need to ensure, the, the point is you need to ensure the vulnerability scanning tool is configured to automatically update. And uh, this will give you the latest vulnerabilities. And um, you know, obviously, <clears throat> there's zero data attacks. <laughs> so um, a lot of us can't uh, really get around that. Um, however, you, know, you want to be, uh, you want to know about these vulnerabilities as soon as possible. Also, using multiple sources. So there's the National Vulnerability Database. Um, that's uh, the, the most common. But also using kind of Red Hat specific, Alpine Linux, Ubuntu uh, type vulnerabilities. And uh, putting that on your radar as well, because you may have, uh, uh, you know, you may have things running that, that use those specific um, tools or tool sets. And then monitor CVE feeds. So <clears throat> this is something that you can subscribe to. Um, you know, Kubernetes has one, and there's a CVE database for uh, Kubernetes. And um, we can be alerted when you know we're running our workloads in Kubernetes, for example, uh, what type of security advisories are coming out, uh, what things we need to focus on for um, being aware of those uh, specific vulnerabilities. So reducing false positives and negatives is a big one too. So 
when we think about that, we're, we think about uh, using tools that allow us to define custom policies uh, to prevent overly broad or irrelevant vulnerabilities from being flagged. Uh, usually, uh, Open Policy Agent or Kyberno uh, can be used in Kubernetes environments to uh, support specific vulnerability thresholds. Um, but the, the, the point here is that we're you know, preventing, uh, you know, putting, putting policies in place, uh, governance, to you know, prevent our workloads from, our, our potentially vulnerable workloads from running in the first place. Also, being able to customize our scanner's configuration to uh, prevent white noise and things that us, us administrators get to kind of uh, as, a, as a report and have to take action on those. And uh, from, speaking from experience, if there's a minimal, you know, in that report, it's going to be easier to take action on and to, and to go through and, and less added to my backlog, which makes my job easier. And then... Uh, adding context. So choose scanners that understand the, the context of your environment. Um, as I mentioned before, you want the container scanner to scan the code as well as the container image itself, being that the, um, the, the context matters. Uh, you don't want these false positives where you're detecting vulnerabilities that actually don't exist. So tools like Sysdig and Aqua Security um, integrate runtime sc scanning and uh, static vulnerability scanning, uh, which, are, which are good to have so that we can uh, ignore unused or inactive code paths in production. And then as, as kind of another side note, um, not on the slide, but integrating static and dynamic scanning. So you've, you've heard of SAST and DAST tools that you can integrate into your pipeline. Uh, these are also important for uh, comprehensive coverage so we can um, use those static static analysis tools to um, check for vulnerabilities in code and then dynamic analysis uh, detects runtime vulnerabilities and misconfigurations. Also, you know, doing continuous scanning and real-time scanning. So one-time scans are not enough, it turns out. <laughs> so we need to continuously scan. New vulnerabilities pop up every day, so we need to be constantly scanning to uh, and, and updating our database. You know, we're, we're talking about all these in kind of the same, the same context. We should be doing all of these things that I'm mentioning in these slides, but you know, uh, we need to continuously monitor and, and actively uh, detect these new uh, vulnerabilities that, that appear every day. So we can take into, take into account multiple sources. So we can um, make scanning a part of our, our every stage in our CICD pipeline. So from commit to build, test, deploy, all those steps, uh, stages in your, in your pipeline, you can apply that scan to. And then um, you know, GitLab CI makes this uh, super easy to do. And then we can um, also in, in multiple environments. So we're, we're ensuring that we're uh, scanning in multiple environments, whether it be dev, testing, uh, staging, and prod, and scanning it through all those as they go through those um, environments so that we're, you know, detecting as, ma as many vulnerabilities as possible. Uh, and then uh, using minimal or distroless images, this is, this is really important for, uh, again, as, a, as an administrator or somebody who goes through these scanning reports, it's um, really nice when the environment uses distroless images or, or minimal images, and um, ChainGuard has been known for, you know, providing us zero CVE images, uh, so I highly, highly encourage you to check out ChainGuard if you haven't for, you know, running your workloads. Uh, this just makes you know smaller footprint, smaller footprint for our images, and therefore our scanning takes less time. So as we're scanning, as I mentioned in the last slide, as we're doing multiple scans and uh, multiple scans and multiple environments, <laughs> you know that process uh, it ex expedites that process a lot more and, and really makes it easier for us to um, get faster feedback and, and, and uh, release to production faster. Also, we have fewer vulnerabilities. So um, they, you know, dist distroless images strip away the unnecessary components, so you only have the necessary binaries and libraries that you need to run your application. 
Uh, this makes it easier than scanning a whole operating system, for example, which may potentially uh, bloat your scan reports and create a lot of headaches for folks and, and uh, people like myself. <laughs> and then, uh, obviously, it reduces the noise, so it's uh, less, less noise in scan reports, eliminating irrelevant uh, vulnerability data. And uh, yeah, so we can get through our backlog quicker, patch those vulnerabilities, the vulnerabilities that we need to patch, and uh, get, you know, have us be on with our day and uh, eliminate those unnecessary OS packages that we have to worry about. Uh, one, one other thing I wanted to mention here was just that um, scanning tools like Trivi, Sneak, and, and Gripe uh, provide an uh, easy way, easy path to um, distributed images and, and a more kind of streamlined approach to managing containers. So those are a couple names that I could throw out there. So as I mentioned before, this is kind of a, a defense in depth approach. We're kind of building up our security posture, making it uh, easier and, and better um, for our admins and, and our security team. Uh, so that we can ensure that uh, along the, uh, and this, this is kind of a layered approach, right? So that if one of these layers was compromised, the other layers in that stack would still be there and, and still get us a good security posture overall. So this is, this is a defense in depth kind of, um, uh, this, this is what they call defense in depth. <laughs> so we have... Scanning in dev, so image and dependency scanning in, in, in development. Uh, so this is con scanning container images and dependencies, um, as we talked about. And this is, this is kind of a summary as well. So we're kind of going through how we're building up our defense in depth and implementing all the things that we've talked about uh, thus far and kind of you know, uh, building up a good security posture for us. And so we're, uh, you know, again, scanning in multiple environments, in, in multiple um, uh, scanning at multiple levels, so container level and the uh, dependencies of not only the code, but uh, also the container image um, dependencies. We're integrating that into our CI/CD pipeline, so we're, uh, every time the code is committed, uh, container image is built or dependencies are updated, they're automatically scanned for vulnerabilities. This is um, kind of essential to do. Image hardening, so we want to, uh, again, use uh, minimal images or distrust images to reduce the attack service. And uh, we can remove unnecessary operating components like shells, package managers, other utilities that uh, are sometimes good for debugging, right? I've been guilty of <laughs> spinning up a temporary image to, you know, BusyBox or um, something like that to, to do some debugging in my Kubernetes cluster, but uh, this is something that we're trying to move away from in the industry. Uh, runtime security, so uh, having, having a, a, you know, a good view of the container runtime and uh, as we're running our applications in, in production, being able to monitor things like uh, at the kernel level and at the container runtime and at the actual host level so that we can uh, get a good uh, idea of what we're vulnerable to. Uh, policy and emission, uh, I mentioned before, um, tools like Kyverno or OPA, and they, they just um, allow us to enforce security policies and, and prevent deployment of, of vulnerable or misconfigured containers. Segmentation, so this is you know, properly using the uh, network policies and kind of micro -seg segmentation to kind of isolate workloads um, you know, on, on different nodes or you know, prevent containers from talking to each other across nodes, uh, so proper segmentation is important. And then performing updates, uh, regular updates, uh, automatic updates, patch management, all those things are uh, really essential. And then secrets management is another important one where we're not uh, storing our secrets in plain text or in our code at all. Uh, we should be util utilizing something like Kubernetes Secrets or HashiCorp Vault or AWS Secrets Manager um, so, so that even if the container is compromised, uh, security uh, Securely managed secrets ensure the, the attacker cannot easily gain access to uh, critical things that could potentially uh, leave us open to 
uh, attack to our most vulnerable uh, or more, most important infrastructure, I should say. And then isolation. So the, uh, using proper isolation, different namespaces for your container scanning tools and um, run, runtime protection, enforcing, um, you know, run, running these, you should be running these container scanning tools in a, in a segregated namespace um, if you're running them in Kubernetes at all. And then, um, you know, not running your containers uh, as root and using things like AppArmor, SE Linux, or SE Comp to uh, detect those runtime security uh, things that we talked about before. So that's kind of the big, that, that's the big picture, that that's kind of uh, what, what we're doing going upstream, again, to go back to that analogy, and trying to figure out what are, what are the essential bits that we need, not really focusing on all the, the features and the aspects of these different container image, image scanning tools, and what they're looking at the marketing that they're you know, pushing and uh, just trying to boil it down to, to really help y'all with uh, trying to get a grasp of the important parts of uh, vulnerability scanning tools and, and specifically container vulnerability scanning. So uh, if you like this talk, um, I, I encourage you to reach out to me on either LinkedIn or Twitter or X. Um, I also have this community called KubeSkills, and it's a community of over 600 people, all learning containers and Kubernetes together. Uh, really love the, the power of community, as uh, Chrysler mentioned in her uh, keynote, keynote talk before. I'm also a CNCF ambassador and a Kubernetes contributor, and um, if you are going to go to KubeCon in Salt Lake, please, uh, you know, uh, let me know, and, and uh, hopefully, see, hopefully I see you there. And again, I work for Sivo as a platform engineer, and you know I, I have to give a big thanks to Sivo because I wouldn't be here uh, if it wasn't for Sivo. They're they're paying for paying for my way, and so I have to give them the proper uh, uh, credit. Uh, yeah. So this is um, yeah, this is me. I try to uh, really, like I said, just try to focus on boiling down the the cybersecurity field in general. And so this is really uh, you know, close to my heart and, and trying to not, this, not make this field of cybersecurity so, so scary and so, um, I guess, just uh, complex. And you know, there seems to be a lot. Uh, so I like to, to boil, it, boil it down and, and help everyone you know, boil it down to the, to the essential bits. Uh, so speaking of, um, if you like this talk and you'd like to learn more about container security in the context of Kubernetes, uh, and this particular course is with GitLab as well, uh, please check out my course, which is going to be in early access next week. Um, go to cyber.com to, to check that out. And you can go along with me as we dive into container security um, from, from you know, building uh, distroless images to uh, scanning our images to this is actually a project course, so we're actually going to build our own GitLab uh, self-hosted instance, and so it's it's a really fun way to kind of learn by doing and also uh, learn the, the the way of uh, you know looking at security through this particular lens. But uh, that's that's all for me. So thanks very much for having me.